Look, we're going to move on to a small story, but a story that says so much. So much about the quiet authoritarianism of many local bodies in uh, this country and also their lack of connection to real people. Um, we've talked about since I think uh, last week uh, a problem in Wellington with LED lights uh, introduced I think about six years ago because they saved power and were kinder on the environment and to cyclists and stuff. Um, 17,000 street lamps, these are the ones on the big poles, um, swapped out for LED lights. Um, but then someone noticed that they were starting, some of them were starting to fall off. They're 15 kgs, they fall to the ground, that's quite a bang. We're going to uh, talk right now to the guy who brought this to Wellington's uh, attention. His name's Chris Calvey, Calvey Freeman. He is a former Wellington City Councillor. Chris, welcome to the platform. Lovely to have you with us. Yeah, good morning, Sean. All right. Well, I was shocked when I read that front page stuff story with you standing with that light because I live in Evans Bay um, and it was just down the road from me from what I could see from the photograph. Just firstly describe to me how you came across this bloody thing. Well, it's a funny thing. You, you sometimes notice things without noticing them. And over about a month or so, um, driving or walking around the bays, I'd noticed the odd lamp uh, missing or the odd uh, lamp column with no head on it. And then one windy day, I actually noticed one uh, hanging on the wire there, one of the yeah. LED lanterns. I rang up the council and said, hey, one of your lanterns is uh, about to fall off. Uh, uh, you better fix it. And sure enough, they fixed it. But then I sort of noticed that several others had never been fixed. And then uh, the other day, I saw a lantern lying on the verge. And I went, stopped the car and had a look. And I was quite shocked at how heavy it was, how big it was. And, uh, well, the rest is history, as they say. So how long, how long ago did you start to notice the problems with the lamps in Evans Bay Parade? And I've got to say, I'm an unobservant bugger because I didn't notice that. And I drive that every morning. Well, I'm a transport planner. I notice things on the roads, but it was a month or so that ago that I noticed. But as I said, Sean, it was that sort of thing where you notice without really noticing. And uh, it was only last uh, Thursday that I really paid attention when I saw this lantern on the road. Yeah, OK. What did the council tell you, Chris? Well, the council haven't told me anything official. Uh, I emailed them and then I thought, look, this is serious. And uh, with my dealings with the council over many years uh, here and overseas, I thought, if you want to get something done quickly, you contact the media as well. So I contacted uh, <laughs> uh, Dom Post straight away. Now, I, to be fair on the council, I, uh, it was only on Thursday night, overnight, I think, that I uh, emailed them. And I have had two acknowledgements since then. But I think they're a little busy at the moment dealing with the, with the media well, and well, well, the we, problem. Yeah, well, we're going to get into that in just a moment. But, but fundamentally, they knew about this problem. And Chris, we now find, uh, I think their initial public statement was it was a small number, a bad mm -hmm. batch. Yes. We now find that is 1,000 of the 17,000 that are around the city, right? 1,000. So. That's a lot. Yep. Um, and, sure and they have no planned remediation action taken. They're just, as they go around doing maintenance, they'll check. I mean, someone yesterday to us, me, Chris, suggested you just send a drone up to each one. It's not going to cost you a lot of money. And you can check for corrosion, right, with a drone. I, I beg to differ. I don't think you would see the, uh, the damage there. What is more amazing to me and more disappointing is that when they ordered 17,000 LED lanterns from different uh, suppliers, um, they uh, didn't have a serial number or, and a mapping system of saying uh, that LED lantern number 123 is on post number 678 yeah. so that they could tell. Okay, so you say no to the drone thing. Okay, um, that's yep. debatable. What should they be doing? Because right now it doesn't appear they're doing anything. And we got the wind well, blowing, think, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, they're in damage control, no pun intended. They're in, uh, in damage control. Richard McLean is with his weight and gold to that council in terms of the nice things he said. And uh, uh, he, the key thing he has actually said, is, and, and is true, is that before they drop, they are likely to droop. Um, uh, look, men of a certain age know about that problem. Uh, but uh, 
they, those lanterns are likely to droop on their wire before they fall off. So if people see them drooping and ring the council, then I think you can be reasonably assured uh, with all the publicity that uh, they will send someone out pretty quickly and see why that particular lantern is drooped. So you're relatively relaxed to have about having, I don't know, 900 plus potentially lethal um, things dropping from Wellington Street Lamps without going there, out there proactively to stop it. No, I'm not relaxed at all, but, but uh, uh, being, being realistic, uh, they can't check 17,000 in, a, in the not? next week. Um, I'm, not, I'm not going to be their, their spokesperson. It's yeah. not my, no, uh, it's not your it's job. It's not my job to, to do yeah. so. But what, what I would say they should be doing is having another look to see whether they can actually figure out which lanterns are on which lamp posts and yeah. if there is a faulty bunch of them then clearly they are the ones yeah. that they should well be. i think they already knew about this chris they should have told us and they're in some sort of negotiation with the suppliers yes. presumably about liability but i think their primary goal should be the public safety and i don't feel oh. safe driving down Evans Bay anymore Absolutely. Uh, and look, if they don't know which ones they're on, then they should start with high wind and high salt spray areas like Evans Bay Parade and check every single one of those. And at the same time, they should get into the CBD and check every one that is, and the suburban shopping centres, every one that is likely to be above large concentrations of members of the public. And then, yes, if they have to check 17,000, they should damn well do it. Uh, it might take them several weeks or several months, but sooner is, be sooner is better than later. Yeah. Good on you, Chris. And can I say thank you as a Wellingtonian uh, oh, for ra raising this issue? Uh, good on you. Good citizenship. That is Chris Calvey Freeman, former Wellington City Councillor. Well, I, look, I just wanted to give you a, an insight. Uh, we've been trying to get some comment out of the Wellington City Council, well, on anything really, because we're kind of, we're kind of on the banned list of um, of people to talk to. That's because there's a green mayor, or, or I don't know. She says it's because every time she comes on, she gets nasty social media comments. Well, grow up here. You're a public figure. Um, but let's just, let's just, Ben's going to join me now from the production studio. So, Ben, let, let, let's just go through with people. So, first up, we try and contact the council for some, some comment on this, right? We do, yes. Um, and at first they seem relatively happy to engage for the most part. But, Sean, it seems as though Cyclone Gabrielle has brought the Wellington City Council's media team to its knees. All of it. All of it, yeah. Because we had someone... Uh, slated in to appear this morning from the council, some infrastructure manager. The right? uh, Wellington City Council's chief infrastructure officer was all teed up. I said, so they have agreed to this time tomorrow. Yes, indeed, they have. And then yesterday, 11.42am, greetings, Ben. Unfortunately, we're going to have to pull out of the interview tomorrow. Siobhan will be on cyclone duty tomorrow morning. So okay, and I appear. can understand that. We can understand that. So infrastructure officer, yep. Yeah, yep. Cyclone yep. duty. No problem with that. So, so what was the next... So, so then we go back, and what do we say? Oh, uh, what see. about the day after? Yeah, thank you. All right, Richard. Uh, we're happy. To, oh, I said, actually, no, we're happy to speak to you. This is Richard McLean, the media yeah. manager, yeah. as a spokesperson at the same time, if that works. Oh, he's also on Cyclone Duty. Duty, okay. Too, so it's not a goer. Yeah. He said, I said, Richard, is there anyone from Wellington City Council who is not on Cyclone Duty tomorrow? He said, no, sorry. Okay, so the entire council... It appears as though... Can I say, can I say so this is a call out to any council employee, anyone involved in the Wellington City Council, if you're not on Cyclone alert this morning, you didn't get the memo and you missed the memo. Get on Cyclone, you'd have to say it yeah. makes me feel a lot safer. Knowing yeah, yeah, that, the, uh, the entire on Wellington City Council is on Cyclone alert duty, yep. Um, next stanza... Uh, next stanza, we then came back and said, OK, is there, is there an increased risk of lampposts falling during the cyclone? Uh, probably not. We're not aware of any around town that are drooping or showing signs of metal fatigue, so fingers crossed we'll get through unscathed. Fingers crossed, that's great. Great risk management. Yeah. Fingers crossed, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch out from above. Uh, we're more concerned about falling trees and slips. Uh, so I then said, just to clarify, no one from the council will front for an interview on the lamppost issue, and that has nothing to do with the cyclone. Um, because I was a little bit, I mean, I can understand being on cyclone duty, but I thought that the cyclone was public knowledge prior to my asking for an interview. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I found it difficult to believe that, that maybe they had to rethink their policies. Yeah. That's what they said, uh, because the storm is looking more serious than we initially thought. 
we have to declare an emergency, then our infrastructure people will be focused yeah, okay, on that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. So, next, was there any more after that? Yeah, and so after this whole build-up where I maybe was starting to believe it, I said, okay, can we reschedule for Wednesday then, provided we'd seen the worst of the storm? Uh, he said, Very reasonable request, Ben, nicely put. Thanks. Um, he said, no, I don't think we'll have anyone willing slash able, but we can send you our statements if you're interested. So that whole build-up there about the, the cyclone... The whole thing was bullshit. We just are not going to front for you. <laughs> it, yeah. We had nothing to do with this. And it kind of all just fell down with that one message. I thought, okay, right, this is reasonable. I'll... Yeah, wait till, well, the storm well, wait, wait till the storm has passed and we'll look for some public accountability and interest. And then Richard McLean basically just says, bugger off. No way he? to be seen, yeah. Just completely abandons that whole previous attempt. And Ben, what I'd like to explain, and I, I tell this story, uh, and I'm so glad, and you recounted it perfectly. Um, and it doesn't just happen to the platform. This is the way that... We have public institutions who spend millions, hundreds of millions, I would say, of dollars on communications people and public relations people uh, to make their organisations accountable to the public, in many cases via media organisations like ours. And that sort of runaround that you got there isn't... Not uncommon at all. Not uncommon at all, particularly, you'd say, from government departments oh, and absolutely. corporates. absolutely. Um yeah, I mean, what's slightly more uncommon is the agreeing to front yeah. initially and then pulling out and then lying about why that's happened. Yeah. Um, but lying. That still I happen. think that's the right word. Lying. I think it's... it's yeah, it's, and i got to uh, say, I just, just disclaimer, Richard McLean and I went to journalism school together. He's an old mate. Oh, that's where he learned it. Um, <laughs> and I would say to Richard and I'd say to Tori Farnow, this is a matter of genuine public interest. And I think the council needs to be accountable and I am genuinely concerned as a citizen of Wellington, particularly driving Evans Bay Parade every morning, that you're going to do something about potentially 900 fatal accidents sitting on top of poles all around this, this city. Um, and why not front? Why not look for solutions and give me some confidence as a rate payer? You're putting my bloody rates up by 12.8%. Um, I think you can do way better than that. But I'd say in general, public institutions could just do way better and be more open to the media. You're spending enough money on it, aren't you? Um, and good work, Ben. Uh, we keep knocking at those doors. I know sometimes it is, is a thankless, thankless task. All right, we got quite a bit of feedback, quite a bit of text coming through on the SNAP election. Um, I'd also just like to have a shout out to uh, those volunteer firefighters at Murawai. Um, and one has lost his life. That is really, really tragic, really tragic. And I know that people all over the country right now, uh, particularly the North Island, are doing stuff and facing situations that are dangerous and challenging and just uh, roha nui, uh, love and support uh, to you all.